Hi, my name is Alex Arxian. I am a founder and CEO at Engine, and today we want to demonstrate how to use Deep Learning Toolkit for speech recognition. Speech recognition is an ability of machine or program to identify what words or phrases have been pronounced in a spoken language and convert that information into a machine-readable format. Today we will demonstrate a basic example on how to identify what specific word was pronounced in a recording. The example is based on speech common dataset, which contains around 65,000 audio files. The all paper files are grouped into 30 classes or 30 words, and duration of each recording is around one second, which have been sampled at 16 kilo sample per second sample rate. And the problem here is to build an algorithm that would be able to identify what word was pronounced in particular. Uh, vapor or recording. If we will look on the vapor themselves, it would be very hard to identify uh, the patterns or some other features in the vapor in order to identify the words. But if we will look on their spectrograms, we can see that each word has some specific feature and pattern, and we can use this information in order to build deep learning based algorithms for the classification. So basically, here we uh, convert our one-dimensional data of waveform into two-dimensional spectrogram, which can be considered as an, as an image, and we transform our speech recognition problem into the image classification problem. And based on these images, we can build and train convolutional neural network for image classification. Here we are using standard convolutional neural network that has several convolutional layers and fully connected layers for the classification. Particularly, this architecture on this data set provides around 7% error or 93% accuracy on a validation set which was generated by randomly sampling audio files from the whole data set. And this uh, algorithm can run at around 100 waveforms per second uh, recognition. For training neural network for speech recognition and also deployment of pre-trained neural networks for inference, we are providing this reference project. And uh, there are several main VIs in the project that intending for different purposes. So as we mentioned uh, earlier, we need to convert all our waveforms into spectrograms. Uh, so we have built a converter that would take all the waveforms from the data set and create corresponding spectrogram image and store that uh, image into one of the image formats. Particularly here it is stored in PNG format. On the left side you can specify different parameters for spectrogram conversion and also you can specify final resolution of the image where the spectrogram will be stored. And the higher the resolution of the image, the better performance we can get, but it would also slow down the training and inference process. Uh, for this reference example, we have chosen 128 by 128 square image format for the conversion. We will not run this uh, example during this recording because it will take some time, up to 10 minutes, depending on the hardware configuration. But we will show uh, what, uh, what is the result of the conversion. So if we will open uh, one of the folders, so we can see corresponding grayscale images of spectrograms uh, for a particular word. After having the dataset prepared, we can start training our neural network. For this purpose, uh, you can use speech recognition train VI. We will not run this uh, VI during this recording because it will take some time. And as you can see, it took around six to seven minutes in order to train a neural network. As you can see, it uh, achieved around 7.5% error rate. And this uh, reference example is very similar to the MNIST classification example that is shipping with the toolkit. If we will look in the block diagram, it has a VI responsible for reading the dataset and splitting the dataset into test and validation subset. Uh, creating a network, specifying the batch size, specifying the target for the execution, creating input layer, uh, which should correspond to the resolution of the image, uh, several convolutional layers and several fully connected layers for the classification. The final 
fully connected layer should be of the same size as the number of uh, classes in the data set. Uh, then we are specifying the training configuration parameters and iteratively running the training process. And periodically we can check the performance of the network on the validation set. After finishing the training, the VI would go to the testing state where we can test and validate the performance of the network on uh, specific samples of the waveforms of the recordings. So uh, when we stop the training, we can go to the testing section of the front panel and specify some waveforms for the testing. So if we check one of the waveforms uh, where the word house was pronounced, we can see how the waveform will look, how the spectrogram will look, and what is the prediction of the network. If we'll choose, let's say, another, another uh, waveform, again, uh, waveform, spectrogram, and the prediction. And also we can test how much time it is required to run the forward propagation of the network. After finishing the training process, the toolkit will generate set of files uh, that would be required for the deployment. We have run uh, the training process several times and we will choose the last three ones. So the first one is a network configuration file which stores uh, all the necessary information in order to rebuild the neural network. And it will have uh, the pre-trained weight stored in this binary format. And also there is an SVG file uh, that would provide the possibility to review the architecture and analyze its computational complexity and memory requirements. So later at the deployment stage, we will use these two files, uh, configuration and pre-trained weights for testing the network during the inference. For testing during inference, we are providing two reference examples that are stored in deploy folders in the project. The first one is to test the performance of the pre-trained network and running the inference by providing the input from the file, and the second one by providing the input from the microphone. If we open the first one, we can see that on the interface we need to provide the configuration information of the network and also provide the pre-trained weights. As was mentioned, we need to go to working directory where the configuration file is stored, choose the latest one, and uh, gain pre-trained weights of our last uh, training run. Run the network, choose a waveform file from the dataset, particularly let's choose from the cat, and see what would be the predictions. As we can see, the network predicts the waveform as a cat. We can play also the waveform on the speaker during the run. So if we choose another waveform, we can see what the waveform, what the spectrogram looked like and what would be the prediction. And also we can monitor what would be the prediction speed during the test time. So the second example is very similar to the first one. Just in this case, uh, the source of the input is coming from the microphone. Again, we need to provide the, uh, the configuration and weight file for, from our last training and run the VI. One, two, three, happy, stop. So as you can see, it performs pretty well and also we can monitor the performance of the network. Again, the block that diagram is uh, very similar to the first one. We are reading configuration file, building the network, initializing the weights, and we are specifying here to run on the CPU and initializing the data acquisition from the microphone, uh, specifying some threshold mechanism for the detection of the speech. Then we are providing uh, the recordings to the waveform to spectrogram conversion VI, resizing that accordingly to, to the resolution at which we have trained our network, run a forward propagation for the prediction and display the prediction results.
you can find some more information on the block diagram some instruction on how to run uh, the, uh, the example vis for the training and for the inference this is pretty much what we wanted to cover during this presentation and if you have some more question or would like to have more information you can visit our website or contact us by email or phone also, you can subscribe and follow us on the social networks to get informed about new updates of the deep learning toolkit or new releases of the reference examples. And thank you for watching.